What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode six, Thick as Thieves. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and do your auntie a favor. Go ahead and hit the button, subscribe. You know what it is. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell, so that way you will already know when Auntie done uploaded something new. I also want to remind you guys to shop Andrea's clothing. Use coupon code AUNTIMO, fitting, 15 that is, and you will get 15% off your purchase. Y'all, this episode was all right. It wasn't giving a whole lot, but you know what I'm saying? It was a little something, something to watch on a Monday night till something else come on. Y'all know what I mean? But well, hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so uh, first things first, as you seen what I said in my last video, um, y'all, my iron, my anemia level is low. So your auntie been a little tired. Once again, I had to take another little power nap. And I'm drinking on some good old-fashioned H2O because not only am I tired, my stomach hurt. Lord, I'm just going through some changes. Pray for me. Y'all, so we got Zells, A1, and Ray J being just as loud and black and ghetto as they want to be, riding down the streets of, I'm sure, rich white neighborhood, looking for Bugatti. They still ain't found this damn dog, y'all. We still on this dog. I ask again, what this got to do with love and hip hop? Why is we out here, Paw Patrol, Rescue Rangers out here looking for a dog? What is this, Lord, what is this? So they riding around town Yelling out Bugatti's name out the window, just being loud and black and ghetto. So they finally pull over, thank God, and they sitting around and they talking or whatever. Zells asked um, A1, did he see that picture that Lyrica put up? Now, I don't know if y'all follow Lyrica on um, Instagram or not, but she had put up this picture. Uh, she was bucking naked at the bottom and had on like this little black t-shirt with a little cookie monster in front of her cookie. I was like, oh, girl. So, of course, Zells didn't, I mean, um, A1 didn't see it. So, Zells was like, oh, y'all didn't see it? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me show it to you. Child, he showed it to Zells and Ray J. Ray J was like, oh, Jesus. Ray J had to hurry up and turn his head because y'all already know Ray J got a problem where he can't be alone with women by himself and he can't look at women because then he starts getting and feeling things. Y'all already know Ray J got a problem with that. So, he had to hurry up and look away, right? So, um, A1 is pissed off. He was like, oh, no. She didn't say nothing about me. Oh, my eye is itching, y'all. Jesus, that came up out of nowhere, Lord. Is she straight? Yes, yeah, she good. So he like, nah, I didn't know nothing about this little old picture. Like, I'm finna have to go and holler at her and see what she talking about. He said that they still working on things, that she's still pissed off over Summer Bunny. Child, this man gonna have the nerve to call her Summer Raccoon. Lyrica is still mad at me over this whole Summer Raccoon situation. Him and his <laughs> clothes. How you gonna have no, some raccoon? Nigga, what that make you? A fall ferret? A spring jackass? Boy, stop. Boy, stop. So he said he gonna go holler at her about the picture, or whatever. Child, is anybody else tired of Lyrica in A1? Just raise your, you ain't gotta say nothing. Just, you know, if you can't raise your hand, just raise your pinky toe. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm sick of them. I'm sick of him, like I'm sick of Ray J and Princess and his damn dog. I'm sick of it. So Yo-Yo was at the School of Hip Hop. She in there teaching a little class, mentoring to him, whatever, whatever it is she do, right? So Mickey Monday come in, he got his baby girl Jaylana with her, with him, and she is so super cute. So they go off to the side to talk or whatever. Yo-Yo was really cute. She was just like, oh, can you rap like your dad? She was like, no, but I can dance. So she shows her how to do the shoe or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know, and I'm damn near for it. I don't know what the hell the damn dance is called. I just know my son loves it, and I try to do it with him, and I look like a damn fool when I do it. So she, like, goes off and... I don't know, probably went and got some candy or something from somebody. So Mickey and Yo-Yo are talking. And so, you know, they were just basically saying how um, she was saying how she's co-parenting with her dad and how she's getting ready to be a grandma because her daughter's getting ready to have a baby. And so she's co-parenting. Mickey said he's co-parenting. Slick is co-parenting. Everybody co-parenting. I don't, it just seems, uh, it didn't really flow to me. Not their conversation, but just, the conversation that they had 
seems like she should have been having that with one of her homegirls or something. Like, because I didn't even, I thought that her and Mickey had just met, like, on the first, second episode when he had came on. I didn't know that they was cool like that to be telling this man that you co-parented with his dad and, I mean, with her dad. And, I don't know. I just thought it was real weird to me, but you know what I'm saying? Anyway, she's excited because she's about to be a grandma. Later on, she actually meets with her older daughter who's pregnant, and she meets with her younger daughter, the one who she says she is co-parenting with. They go off to the spa, have a little mani petty day. It was real cute. And so her daughter was asking her, so, you know, when the baby get here, so you going to retire from the rap game? You going to be a grandma at the house changing diapers and all that? Yo, yo, like, hell to the no, no, no. I'm still going to be out here and work because I want to grind to get what the heck I want. And her daughters was so sweet. Her daughters were just basically saying that, you know, she's worked for to make sure that they've had the best their whole life. They've never wanted for anything. They've never had to, to you know, they've, they've always had the best of everything because Yo-Yo was out there grinding, making sure that they had the best of everything. So they just really want her to slow down, be a grandma, enjoy your grandbabies. That's all they said. Enjoy your grandbabies. But I just thought it was cute. You know, a cute little mother-daughter thing at the spa. And then, her, like I said, her daughter's pregnant, so her daughter just really wants her to be like right there up under her during her pregnancy and i ain't gonna lie y'all it was kind of making me feel a little bit some kind of way because y'all know i lost my mother to cancer and so she wasn't there you know for my pregnancy because she was not here on this earth but i love you mama i hope i'm making you proud but yo yo slow down take care of the damn grandbaby girl i mean you yo yo but ain't nobody playing with your yo yo you know what i'm saying oh yeah fizz in april So, April is at court. She's there. She says she's got her support system there. She's there, of course, with, um, she's going back and forth with Omarion about what school her son is going to go to. Rich people problems. And, of course, Fizz is right there to support her every step of the, of the way. Fizz going to have the nerve to say he don't care what Omarion says because Omarion uh, ain't said nothing to him yet anyway about the whole April situation. And, again, I say Omarion don't have to go approach you and say nothing to you. You the one creeping and deeping and all of that with his ex-old chick. So why should he have to come and approach you and say anything to you? If anything, on some real nigga spit, you would think that you would go to him and be like, look here, I know it's awkward. I know we got to get on the stage and we got to bump, bump, bump and all of that. But look here, I just want to keep the peace. You know what I'm saying? But April, just as well, like they just getting on my whole nerves with the whole thing. Let me get April over with. Later on, she goes and meets with Jason Lee because Jason Lee is basically telling her the ratings ain't pulling in with you like we thought they were. The feedback from the audience is, you got to go. Hey ho, hey ho, you got to go. They don't want you no more. And we are losing a sponsorship already because, I don't know if it's because of her, but he said they done already lost the sponsor whatever it is basically he said that they need to take a step back that um they he just wants them to go their separate ways now april of course she feeling some type of way about that she's like anybody can go and pull some bad comments from something and i don't care what somebody has to say about this whoop the youth yada yada she's saying that she's not all into the to the media and to the you know the celebrity gossip baby that's hollywood or not that's what the hell they do celebrity gossip you ain't into it what you going on there for then girl so basically, Chai, he tell her your services are no longer needed and she's pissed, but she going on about her way, Chai. She going on about her way. So Lyrica and Princess are having a little spa day. They go get some little massages, whoop de whoop chilling. Princess, once again, is stressed out because she still has not found Bugatti. Oh, Lord have mercy, this doggone Bugatti. Um, just to get Princess ass out the way, she says that she got a message from this guy that said that his neighbor ended up getting a dog around the same time that Bugatti came up missing. And so he'll hop over the neighbor's fence to get the dog if they serious about them 20 racks. So she said because Ray is out of town, she don't want to wait for him to get back. She gonna beat up with her homegirl with some spy glasses on at the police station to go get her dog back. Y'all, that's what she does. There was nothing dramatic about it. 
She ends up meeting the guy at the police station. Just so happens though, when she does get there, she sees the same car similar to the car that they caught on camera that actually took the dog that was out there in front of their house. Now, when she came in to get the dog from the guy, you know, of course they had his face blurred out. He said that that wasn't his car. She wants the man to be arrested. The police are like, look here, we don't have no evidence. It's just an ongoing investigation. He's saying that that's not his car that's out there. Baby, it's a dog, girl. Not saying nothing against no dogs, because I know a lot of people think of dogs as their babies and all that. But if it were a human being, okay, they can arrest that man. But baby, that's a dog. It's a dog. It's it's all right. It's a dog. They also talk about the whole situation with Lyrica and how she, you know, posted that picture with the cookie monster in front of her cookie. She claimed she was just trying to show off her waist snatcher that she had on. Child, that's you and A1 going tip for tap back and forth. And it's silly. It's silly and it's dumb and that ain't what you do when you're married. I'm just saying it's dumb as hell. But she also tells Princess that um, Summer Bunny or Summer Raccoon, <laughs> Slutty Bunny, that's what Lyrica calls her. She says that she wasn't the only one that A1 cheated on her with while she was pregnant. Now, this is my thing. Y'all did it to each other. I mean, y'all are even. Y'all are even Steven. I mean, just call it what it is. Either get the hell back with this man or shut the hell up about it because it's getting on my dog on nerves, for real. Between Ray J and Princess and his dog. All right, y'all. So, J-Bug meets with Immature. Yes, the real, for real, Immature. Batman, Romeo, and LDB. Because J-Bug wants to get an Immature, um, like a throwback tour with them going like how they did with B2K and Pretty Ricky and all them. J-Bug claims that the fans are always asking, where is Immature? Whoop -de -whoop. But child, he's trying to get that coin. He's trying to get that bag. That's why he's trying to get them together. Now, they was all on board for it. But J-Bug lets them know that a part of the contract is that um, Marcus Houston will get 50%. LDB and Romeo will split the other 50%. So they'll have 25%. Reason being, Marcus Houston will carry majority of the load because he is the lead singer. Plus, he's going to be performing some of his own LPs from his own solo records. Okay? That's why they want to offer him more money. Now, LDB is not with it. Romeo really not saying nothing. So I don't know if he cool with it or if he not cool with it. Either way, he ain't saying nothing. He just kind of sitting there with it because I'm sure this thing like shit, that's a check. What you need me to sign at? You need me to go backstage right now, practice some moves? Nigga, I'm ready. But LDB is like, we've never done it that way before. We've always split it three ways. So that's not fair to me. Now, Jay Boog said when, before B2K went on tour, they had already had an understood, uh, understanding that Omarion would get more money than the other three. Reason being, he's got his own solo career and he's got his own solo records that he will be performing as well. They were all okay with that because they respected his craft. They understood that he had his own solo thing. LDB, on the other hand, like, I don't give a damn. We was all together getting paid together. As long as we together, we gonna get all 33%. Now, again, I'm just saying, Romeo was like, where the cash at? Let's keep it real. Immature, LDB, you around my age. And baby, I'm a knock, knock, knocking on 40's door. So, it ain't like you can get out there and do the old moves and keep up the old stamina like you had back in the day. Bruh, I'm sure you got kids who sooner or later kids gonna have kids. Baby, get that check. Get that check and shut the hell up. Because it, it's gonna be in the millions, you know that. Boy, get that check and shut up. So y'all, J-Boog and Paris meet up to have some pizza. Who knew that they were friends? Apparently, he gave her her first acting role in the movie Fall Girls. Never seen it, never heard of it, so I don't even know if it's that good. Anyways, they meet up to have pizza, and I'm proud of Paris because she is sticking to her diet regimen. She don't want nothing to do with that pizza. She's saying that she wants eating healthy to be a part of her lifestyle. So she's taking that bull by the horns, and I'm proud of you, girl. 
do you boo boo but um she asked him how's everything uh well she asked jay book how's everything um you know tour life with b2k knowing that they've got all the drama that they have now jay book says that they've got issues within themselves you know what i'm saying with fizz being his best friend when all four of them get together he says the tension is so thick now added on the fact that there's fizz in april he says that the tension there is so Thick that you know he's hoping that this tension don't end up breaking up the group because of course that can mess up his bag which is not what the hell that he wants now Paris is like how is Fizz really because if you talk to April he's the best thing since sliced bread if you talk to Moniece he's this horrible person that's done XYZ Da, da 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 But J-Bug is like, the thing with Moniece is she knows the good, the bad, the ugly. The things that people see, the things that people don't see. And she's just basically done with the BS. April has yet to see this. It's basically what he was saying. So, child, once again, J-Bug, go to LDB, tell that fool, get that check and stop playing. Which, again, I hear that there is supposed to be an immature two are going on so obviously they worked something out y'all if any of y'all know for real if that tour is going down because they said it's supposed to be perfect gentlemen a part of that tour now a lot of y'all ain't gonna know who perfect gentleman is if you wasn't born in the 80s because baby hakeem was my dream oh my god i ain't even oh i started to sweat a little bit just thinking about it oh my god y'all pam and a1 at the house they in the kitchen talking right Basically talking crap about Lyrica, not knowing that Lyrica's in the house right around the corner, listening to everything they say. So A1 is telling Pam, Mama Pam, like Ashley Shaw Miller called her. Shout out to Ashley Miller. Man, I was watching her review about it this morning and I was rolling. She called her Mama Pam. If y'all go check out anybody else's YouTube channel, go check out Ashley Miller. She is damn hilarious. She is hilarious. Anyways, they in there talking crap about um, Lyrica. A1 tells Pam about the picture that she posted on Instagram with the little cookie monster, right? Now, Mama Pam does bring up a valid question. Who the hell took the picture? Now, I'm thinking she probably had it on a little tripod, kind of little something that I got my camera on right now, which... It don't matter. She took the picture and she put it on Instagram. Soon as they said that, she come around the corner. Oh, so y'all really just gonna talk about me like I'm not even here? You need to be getting on your son about why your son was on FaceTime with a chick and da 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 da. Baby, Mom Pam gonna say, just because we look the same age or I look young, don't mean that you can talk to me any kind of way. You gotta respect me. I'm still his mama. I'm an OG. Girl, Mama Pam, don't nobody think y'all look girl. <laughs> so child and Lyric and A1 start going back and forth. Oh my God, it was so stupid. Then she's like, after all that he's done to me, I'm still here in the house. I could have moved out a long time ago, but I'm still here at the house. Baby, Pam gonna say, men do stuff because of women. I could about wrench my hand through that damn screen and choke slam her ass. How are you an OG, as you call yourself, and gonna sit up there and say men do stuff because of women? And you somebody mama. Girl, you sound re-damn-diculous. So, something happened to where, oh, my Pam ass gonna say, guess what, A1? I heard that she said you don't deserve no home-cooked meal. Yo, you don't deserve no meal. A1 like, oh, word. Just dumb. Just dumb. She's like, well, go let summer bunny or slutty bunny go cook you. Y'all sounded dumb for this. It just sounded dumb. So then something happened to where, um, what's her full name? A1 and Pam started laughing about, I don't even know what they was laughing at. Then Pam is like, huh, huh, I got a hilarious son. He's so hilarious. It was just weird. Stupid weird. So, Lyrica gets pissed. She walks out. He come chasing after her. She smacked shit out of him, which she should have done a long dog on time ago. She goes upstairs to pack a bag. As she's going upstairs to pack a bag, she gets on her live or gets on Instagram, period, and sees that Zells is on live with Summer Bunny. Now, I thought Zells was cool with Lyrica. Why would you be on live with the side chick talking to her and then they talking about Lyrica in A1? Like, really? So she goes downstairs and shows A1, like, look here. 
So this girl is speaking on my name right now on live. What you gonna do about it? He calls Zells and is like, why are you on live with this chick right now? Zells stuttering over his well. Well, I I didn't think well I the, 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 he a shitty friend for doing that. I'm sorry. You ain't mm -mm. with friends like that, you don't need no doggone enemies. So Lyrica got pissed. She goes upstairs to pack her little bag, or whatever. She's leaving up at the house. He's steady trying to grab the bag away. No, please stay. No. She's pissed. She's leaving. She probably going over to her mama's house or something. Child, I don't know. I girl. Y'all, I don't know how I'm feeling about this season of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. A lot of these storylines is boring. And they dumb. And they dumb boring. And they boring dumb. And it don't make no sense to me. What does it have to do with love and hip hop? The only person on here that done had anything to do with love or hip hop has been Mickey Monday and Yo-Yo. And Yo-Yo ain't had a hit since 84. Like what? What is we doing? But y'all, that was the end of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I hope I made this mess here entertaining enough for y'all because baby, when I tell you, it was it was painful to sit through and watch because I sat like this, my face hurts. I was, what is I'm watching? <sighs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.